Welcome to the January 1st through January 15th Bible in a Year uh, overview for these first couple weeks uh, as we begin this uh, new year and this Bible in a Year year. So I'll be, the readings, uh, if you do not have the Bible in a year, uh, the readings are below in the description. Uh, there's kind of first track, second track, third track. That's just, I'll be using that. You're essentially three different each, each day uh, in the Bible in a year. There's two chapters from that first track, uh, one from the, s the second, and then one about one from the third. If you're reading with, on your, your own Bible, just, just kind of that's probably the pace to keep. Uh, two chapters of the first, one of the second, one of the third. Uh, just uh, And so I'm just going to go through some of the, the things with these, uh, these books uh, just to help you kind of enter into and kind of get some of the terrain. Uh, I can't be exhaustive. Or I could be here for hours if I tried to be exhaustive, and that would be really boring. Uh, but know that you know after January fifteenth, uh, you know send your questions regarding these first fifteen days on the the reading, and I'll get I'll, I'll make a, a Q and A video uh, Q and A video. I'll answer some of the the big questions and stuff that come up because I can't cover everything here. Uh, but first, I'll just start with Genesis. So that Genesis one to thirty two, uh, it starts with. Uh, what's called the primeval history, really the origins of, of humanity. God creating uh, the heavens and the earth, uh, the visible realm, uh, filling it up with creatures, including uh, Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, uh, in chapters 1 and 2. Uh, and, and then chapter 3 speaks of the fall, where they disobey God, they get kicked out of the Garden of Eden, uh, and then things just go downhill. There's fratricide, so... Which is killing, killing one, killing one's brother. So that's what Cain does to Abel in chapter four. Just goes downhill, uh, and then we get down. Then there's Noah. So Noah, just to see the flood, really is God's restart uh, project. He's going to restart the world, you, if more or less. There's a lot of imagery uh, used, kind of paralleling uh, the the creation of the world with uh, with the with the, the flood, kind of then the waters and then they come down and then the land appears just as in the uh, the first creation account it's just the waters on the earth and then the land kind of comes up later so noah's ark is really a reset button but then even after uh, noah and his family uh kind of begin to repopulate the earth uh, things go downhill all right so sin just has this downward spiral uh, and in chapter uh, 12 the, the, the in genesis it starts with kind of the, the patriarchs. Uh, so being with Abraham, and then it'll go to Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. So that's really, uh, so we're at 12, it starts with, with Abram. His name hasn't been changed to Abraham, but God's going to make covenants with him, uh, really, and make promises to him. Uh, and so it's that, for the first 10 or so chapters there of, from 12 to about 20, 23, 24, it really focuses on Abraham, and then it's going to shift to Isaac, and then Jacob, and then uh, it'll get to Joseph toward the end of the, the book of Genesis, which uh, he's not in this this section. But I think the one thing with these, uh, with those, the, the whole passage from the whole Genesis section is, you're going to see there's the genealogies at different points. And just one way to see these is they're kind of, you know, connecting the accounts, uh, the different accounts. So you have um, Noah, and then it's going to kind of fast forward. All right. And so see, see those as almost like fast forwarding to the next kind of count. And it's drawing, it's, it's kind of sewing these these accounts together. They're, they're not disconnected. If you like watching a TV show, you're watching something. And then the next scene is like, you don't know any of these characters. There's no connection from the previous. Well, that's really what the... One thing the gene genealogies are do they're they're tracing okay this is this guy and then he had this child son and this here's the genealogy uh, and then we, we did kind of pick up the story of the next person um, but they're uh, so that's one way just to help to see this genealogies there's typically there's a shift in the focus of the uh, kind of main character if you will uh, in those places uh, when you're reading these chapters uh, I think especially the first eleven. Uh, to really see, get this, try to like under, look for what's the substance. It's not conveying scientific truth in the creation accounts. It's not, you know, 
Uh, it's not like well, we got to we'll, we'll find some garden on on the earth that's Eden. Actually, Eden uh, is described as having rivers flowing from it in chapter two. Well, it's described as a mountain, really, because uh, that's where river go, rivers go downhill. <laughs> Uh, so it's this high place, place close to heaven. It's really Eden is it's uh, the imagery there is really pointing to this lushness uh, and cl because of closeness to God. And it's when Adam and Eve sin that they get separated uh, and life gets more difficult. So um, the really what's this? What's the what's the truth that God is trying to convey through the story? through these accounts. Actually, I don't like using the word stories because it makes it sound like, well, it's just kind of made up. No, these are, there's real truths here. Uh, now, was there actually a, a, gar a garden called Eden? Was there actually like this? Like, uh, maybe, uh, we don't know. But what's the real truth there? That man, God created man uh, and woman in friendship with him. Uh, life here on earth was, was wonderful. They were, they were happy. Uh, and it's only when they turn from God that things go south, uh, and then that kind of that rupture. Uh, so it's really to, to look, you know, if there's something like just seems really outlandish, uh, what's the, what's the substance? What's the real? What's the, what's the truth that God's trying to convey here? And not, you're not going to be able to get everything. I don't know every all, everything, you know, everything in the scriptures that's uh, being conveyed. It's uh, it's always there's more to learn. Uh, but that, that sense of humility, okay, Lord, what's the what's the truth? What's the deeper truth? Uh, the first creation account in Genesis 1 is going to show the ordering of creation. Uh, God's going to create these different realms, and he's going to fill them. Days 1, 2, and 3, he creates uh, the heavens and the earth, uh, or let's see, light and the darkness, uh, the sky and the sea, and then the land. And then he's going to fill them with the moon and the stars and the sun. On the fourth day, the fifth day, he's going to fill the sky and the sea with fish and birds. And then the sixth day, he's going to fill the land with creatures. So I think it's, there's an ordering. Uh, with this. So it's really looking for the substance as we're going through the scriptures to look for what's the substantial truths that God is trying to communicate uh, to us. And they aren't always as evident. Um, and then one more thing just with the this Genesis section. And as we go through the scriptures, and uh, especially the, the Old Testament, uh, the first number of books in the Old Testament, uh, you're going to see some behavior, kind of morally questionable behavior. And you're like, well, wait a minute, Abram, Abraham is doing this, or someone's, what's, is God saying? No, he's not saying this is okay, so some of the behavior and stuff. He's going to work through it. He's showing the brokenness. Uh, but one way it sh shows, you know, the one way that it's, uh, instead of just pointing out, well, Abraham sinned against God, you have to see the consequence of his action, of their actions, all right? So you're going to see, like, the messiness that takes place when they have more than one wife, all right? <laughs> it's God, it's, he shows it. He shows the, the messiness of sin, and he doesn't just directly say, well, this, this is sin here in the scripture. So it's, uh, um, I mean, that's important because it can be very uh, scandalous, especially when we get into the book of Judges. Whoa, whoa, what's, why is this in the Bible? Well, here's the messiness. Here's what happens when we turn away from God. All right, so the, to see, you know, if there's something kind of questionable, I don't, why are they doing, why, is, why isn't God saying anything? Well, actually, uh, he, it, he's going to communicate what the effects of what happens uh, are going to say a lot uh, about the behavior. So it's not going to be, it's more implicit, indirect, with that so just not just to be forewarned uh, so that's really the, the section of genesis uh, i know and getting through the patriarchs um, you know go through abraham isaac and then begin jacob uh, his whole kind of uh, account uh, the second track is with the psalms so the psalms is and it's really the inspired prayer book of Israel uh, and now the church also it's uh, and so to see them as their, their prayers that God has inspired that we can make our own he's, he's given us these prayers where they there's there's different focuses different uh, uh, emphasis some are prayers of Thanksgiving some are prayers of lament sometimes there's the same there's a Thanksgiving lament and then a Thanksgiving in the same uh, psalm and so just to be attentive that uh, there's a there's a vast variety um, 
in, but they're they're really meant to be. Uh, they're prayers, uh, prayers of praise, prayers of petition, crying out to God. Uh, um, so uh, as we get more and more into that, I'll maybe I'll give some more uh, aspects with the Psalms, but just to see them at, at this point, just as they're kind of prayers, and just put yourself, okay, what's the what's the author? Uh, God's the primary author, and there's a human author too, and many they're attributed to David. Especially these first uh, what, 50 or so uh, psalms are really poke kind of particularly with David. So just just see, okay, what's what's the struggle? Uh, and they're very relatable in the sense of, okay, like I feel like some of them are, I think I'm, I feel like I'm drowning. Lord help me. Uh, so this, this there's a lot of imagery, uh, but they they're meant to be um, an inspired prayer book uh, of God. And that's why the church, we use every, every mass, there's a psalm, all right? It's because uh, it's, it's scripture, it's God's inspired songs. Uh, and then the third track, Matthew. So you're going to start with the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, and normally we just get small pieces of like the book of Matthew at mass. So this, this is going to be nice. You're going to be able to read, you know, kind of semi-continuous uh, and see kind of the big the whole story, not just get a little paragraph. And then maybe next week get a small another. You're kind of how things progress uh, in the um, the gospel, uh, but the gospel of Matthew, its uh, focus in particular uh, is is toward a, a Jewish audience, uh, and so that it's applicable to everybody. Uh, but some of the the styles and stuff stylistically, uh, it's going to show that Jesus is the new Moses. That's why the Mount, uh, you know, the the Sermon on the Mount, kind of he's very. There's some of the the words, imagery, and stuff that's used, it's like, he's the new Moses. All right. Um, but the book of Matthew begins with the infancy narratives, uh, well, the genealogy that uh, kind of the birth of Christ, or at least the annunciation uh, of Joseph, uh, the angel tells Joseph Mary's going to have a child, and then there's the Magi, uh, and then the Holy Family fleeing to Egypt, coming back, John the Baptist, and then Jesus begins his ministry. And then the Sermon on the Mount, chapter seven, 5 through 7 of uh, Matthew. And it's really, this is hard-hitting teaching. You know, if you really look at it like, whoa, Jesus, he's, uh, there's some strong things he says here. Um, many people uh, perhaps think like, oh, yeah, Jesus is, you know, he's just easy. Actually, there's, it's a high order, uh, some of the things that he says in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, but he's going to go, there's going to be this kind of, as you're going through the, the book of Matthew, once the Sermon on the Mount hits, there's going to be a teaching section, and then there's going to be kind of like actions, where he's going to be doing miracles, interacting with other people, and then it's going to go back to teaching. So this, the first teaching of the Sermon on the Mount, he's going to kind of manifest his power, uh, healing the centurion slave, uh, a number of other miracles. Uh, and then he's going to, there's a missionary discourse, where he's going to be talking to the, the apostles, he's going to appoint the apostles and kind of prepare them for to go out on mission. Uh, and so that's kind of where we'll kind of, that's where that, and then they go out on, on mission uh, and some receive them, some don't. Uh, so that's kind of, kind of gets the, that one. Uh, that'll be where Matthew kind of ends that uh, after the disciples have been sent out uh, and they're returning and Jesus kind of says, uh, to some some cities just haven't received them. Uh, better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city uh, because they didn't receive uh, the message so that the kingdom of God isn't at hand. Uh, and with the kingdom of God, helpful uh, as well, really to see the kingdom of God, it's God's reign. Uh, it's his kingdom. Also, It's it's, it's his reign. And who's, who's the kingdom? A kingdom always has a king. So Jesus, when you see the kingdom of God, it's, you can almost insert sometimes Jesus, where it says kingdom of God, like he's talking about himself many times, or uh, his church. Uh, and actually, next next video, we'll actually get into the parables, so that'll be a little more applicable then. Uh, but Jesus, the kingdom of God is God's reign. God's going to break in uh, and establish a new reign. Not not a political reign, uh, but he wants to transfer a reign in our hearts. Uh, and so that's really the gospel of Matthew is going to show how God, Jesus breaks in uh, to establish this new kingdom, uh, in particular, the kingdom of love and grace. Uh, 
so I, I hope you find these uh, this this helpful just to give you some bearings as you begin reading the Bible here, uh, and I'll send your send your questions after the two weeks. Kind of you just make a list as you're going through, um, and then send them to me, uh, and I'll I'll make a video I'll make a Q and A video with those, and, and then I'll get a new one out new video out uh, before mid mid January, kind of the next section. So. God bless. Have, enjoy reading the scriptures.